good morning children hope you all are doing well okay in the last class the same chapter about the agriculture what are the concept we have learned children yes about the different kinds of farming and the cropping pattern we have seen and we have seen about the different kinds of crops and then you know the technology or the infrastructural use of uh, in agriculture that we have seen and the contribution of agriculture and the you know the employment towards the indian economy we have seen in today's class we are going to see about the food security and the impact of globalization on agriculture will be seen children okay see here the topics to be discussed in this class is about food security and the next one will be seeing about impact of globalization on earth okay yes children coming to the food security so as we know coming to the india what happens children so we can see the you know poverty is a major problem yes apart from that increasing in the population so that's the reason what happens children the many people we can see the people are dying without the proper that is the mal nutrition they are not getting the nutrition food okay so that is the reason it is very much important to adopt this food security in our country okay what do you mean by food security first of all yes that means in order to ensure availability of food to all sections of society our government carefully designed a national food security system that means for all the people all the population or the sections of the you know the people they are within the country so for those people everyone has to get the proper food so to make sure or to ensure that everyone will get the food that is what you know that's the reason they have started with this food security council in our india okay so in your ninth standard you have seen children what do you mean by you know the what is the ultimate goal of democracy so there we have studied that you know once every person will go to bed you know with food that is without starving everyone has to sleep in our country so that means a democracy so here what happens in our country we started to ensure that every people of you know our society the sections of our society will get the proper food that will be called as a food security okay so to provide to make sure that everyone will get food so we have started with the two components the government has started with two components that you have studied in your ninth standard the entire separate chapter only children okay you just remember all those things i told you in the last you know in your ninth also it is very much important concept whether you people remember or not i'm not sure just go through once again with your ninth just have a base okay see here so this food security india has system has got two components the one it is buffer stock and one more it is public distribution system guys remember one it is a boat buffer stock and one more it is public distribution system so finally the food security of india india has got the two sections one it is buffer stock and one more it is public distribution system so what do you mean by public distribution system children yes so you can see in your surroundings only ration you know you will be telling you no know, ration shop so there what what will happen there children how it works so this public distribution system what happens which provides food grains and other essential commodities at subsidized prices in rural and urban areas so in this shops what happen with you know the considerable prices with minimum prices compared to the outside shops they will be providing a food you know the food grains for the essential people and other essential commodities for the people okay so even in the rural and even in the urban areas okay for the poor people they will be providing food grains and other necessary things with the reasonable or subsidized prices that will be called as public distribution system let us see how it works see how public distribution system works 
we can see that the farmers will be producing the you know the food grains so through that what happens our food corporation of india will purchase that by paying the minimum support price the government will fix some prices for each you know the crop children so that will be called as minimum support price so they will be paying that minimum support price to the farmers and they'll be purchasing that food grains and they'll be storing in a buffer stock they will be storing in a particular set of godowns at the warehouses so when it is necessary they will be you know giving that to the people are issuing that to the people see allocates the food grains and it will be start issuing to the other states and then see that will be distributing in the fair price shop that is the ration shops it will be distributing to the people or the consumers with the subsidized prices okay hope you people understood right yes children see the primary objective to ensure availability of food grains to the common people at an affordable prices i told you people with the reasonable prices they have to produce the food grain or they have to make sure the people will get the food grains at a reasonable price that is what the main motto of this public distribution system okay and the one more it is the focus of the policy is on growth in agriculture production and on fixing the support price for procurement of wheat and rice to maintain their stock so as we know india is a basically an agriculture country so to provide the minimum support even to the agricultural people are the farmers they have started with this policies okay see food corporation of india is responsible for procuring and stocking food grains whereas distribution system is ensured by public distribution system okay so here we understood that the food corporation of india will be purchasing as we seen in this you know the picture so what happens there how it works up you know the public distribution system works children so the food corporation of india will be purchasing the you know the food grains and it will be storing and then the distribution part is responsible to the public distribution system okay it will try to reach all the people and distribute the goods with the affordable prices yes children in the next we can see this how are food grains produced what are the disadvantages and advantages of this method so here what they are explaining you know the food grains are produced how the food grains are produced and advantages and disadvantages of this method the food corporation of india produces food grains from the it procures so it takes the food grains from the farmers at the government announced minimum support price so we have seen in that picture children so we understood that what happens the food corporation of india will purchase the goods are the crops from the yes the farmers are the producers and it will be storing how it will purchase children by paying the minimum support price which has been fixed by the government okay hope you people understood right the minimum support price it has been fixed by the government they'll be purchasing the the food corporation of india purchasing the you know the crops from the farmers okay yes the government used to provide subsidies on agriculture inputs such as fertilizers power and water so even government is supporting the farmers by providing some subsidies based on the you know the agricultural inputs it may be for the machineries it may be for the fertilizers it may be for the you know the power irrigational facilities all those things okay yes children these subsidies have now reached unsustainable levels and have also led to large scale inefficiencies in the use of these scarce inputs so we understood that the food security in india how it works and the public distribution so it purchases the crops from the farmers and by paying the minimum support price so to increase the production the government started to provide some facilities to the farmers and then they they started to provide the subsidies on the you know the things which is needed by the inputs which are necessary for the 
agriculture so here what happened the whatever the subsidies they are giving now reach unsustainable levels it is not maintaining the same level whatever the subsidies they are giving and have also led to large scale inefficiencies in the use of these caps inputs so as we know what happens children yes the you know we saw both green revolution so it was one of the successful revolutionary activities which happened in agricultural field but still we have got some drawbacks out of it what are those drawbacks children we started to use the irrigational facilities more and more and we started to use more and more fertilizers so due to that land degradation happened so that is the reason here what they are telling the inefficiencies the whatever the use of the overuse of these you know the things started to make some this you know the inefficiencies okay that we have to understand and the next one is the high msp that is you know minimum support price subsidies in input and committed food corporation india purchases have disordered the cropping pattern so why it happened children because as we know the main rice and wheat are the major food crops in our country so there what happened there are some states they are giving only importance for wheat and rice production like punjab and haryana these are the two states we can see that punjab and haryana they started to give only much importance in the production of food grains like yes you know the wheat and rice just to, to get the minimum support price so that time what happened it will not be having a sustainable development or the growth so it started to disorder in the cropping pattern so other crops were not grown much than compared to rice and wheat okay that we have to see so hope you people understood that concept no children in the next we are seeing about how are consumers divided what are its drawbacks so we have divided the consumers that is you know the the public distribution system is distributing the food crops are the necessary commodities to the people so what basis they started to give you know give those things based you know they started to divide the consumers into different categories okay so how they have been divided see the consumers are divided into two categories that is the below poverty line and the one more it is above poverty line okay guys understand we have divided the consumers into two division one it is below poverty line and the one more it is above poverty line what are the drawbacks of this children so anyhow we have divided the people into two categories the consumers but do you think whatever the categorization happened is a you know the perfect one no sometimes what happened really a deserving or the needy poor people has been excluded from this list and the few people who are you know even the above poverty line people has started to use this facilities so that is a major drawback we can see whatever the facilities which has to reach to the final are the needy people are not reaching okay you can see even in your surrounding children how it is happening really needy people are the desert people are not getting the facilities which has been you know given by this you know the government see here however this categorization is not perfect and the number of deserving poor are excluded from the bpl category and some of the apl slip back to bpl so that's what here they are telling some of the needy really needy are the poor people are excluded from this bpl list that is the below poverty line list but the few are some of the apl that is the above poverty line people also started to step back to the bpl you know that is the below poverty line list just to get the facilities okay so that's what the drawback of this categorization of a consumers okay children hope you all understood this concept right if any doubt you just let me know children in the next we can see about how can we be, you know become self sufficient so we understood we are facing a lot of problems so out of that how can we become self sufficient in the production of agricultural crops